What's up guys? Got these denim Air Jordan 1s that we're gonna be dying. But the first thing we gotta do is bleach them. Let's set up the tank. Got the water and bleach nicely mixed up. Now we're gonna put the shoes inside for a good 20 to 30 minutes. Wait, hold up, dude, hold up. Did you see this? Bro, where's the white leather? Did you not see this, bro, seriously? Dude, they're ruined. I don't know, man, Steve's not gonna be happy about this one. I don't know, bro, let me talk to Steve. All right, that did not go as planned. We left the shoe sitting in the bleach for way too long. All the white leather all around the shoe is completely gone. Afterwards, I sat there and picked off all the white leather from the crevices underneath the denim to see what it would look like once it's fully dried. Cause right now we have kind of a gray suede going on. It didn't dry evenly, it's really rough. The problem is, I should not have put these shoes inside of bleach to begin with. Leather and bleach should not go well together. I should have thought about that from the beginning. Luckily, we destroyed these shoes so you don't have to. These shoes are ruined for what I was going for on this video, but they're not completely trash. There's still a couple things I could do with these. For example, the soles are still good for a donor project in the future. They're brand new. I like the color of the soles. The second thing we could do is just run with this look. It doesn't look bad, the gray suede with the wash denim look. We could add some stencils, dye the sneaker. There's still hope for the shoe, but we're not gonna do anything with these today. Luckily, we got a brand new pair of denim ones. Big shout out to our sneaker store, Many Worlds. So we're gonna take off the Nike tags and wing logos. Let's try this again. We're back where we started. We got our bleach. We're gonna put the bleach directly onto the denim only using a brush. For this process, I got the biggest brush I own just so I could cover the most ground on this denim. The biggest thing I'm looking out for is not getting any bleach on the white leather. As you guys may know, I have bad experience with this part. If you guys have ever worked with bleach, it's pretty easy to apply to denim. It's on the thick side, so it's not too runny. So the bleach is already starting to work. I got one shoe fully done. I started off over here. When you compare it to the before, you can already see a difference. Now we're gonna put these outside in the sun to let the UV rays do the rest of the work. You guys see that beautiful truck over there? Yeah, that's mine. Let's try these on the whip. Let me, let me show you guys the tour. It's fine. <laughs> It's, it's not really mine. Second shoe is good to go. Before we put it outside with the first shoe, we're gonna take care of the hang tag. Let's dip it in some bleach. We're back. We got the shoes back from outside. After about 30 minutes under the UV rays of the sun, we got these results. Pretty easy stuff. All we did was apply one even coat of bleach all around the sneaker, put them outside under the UV rays for 30 minutes, and got them to white. Now we have to deactivate the bleach by using some water and hydrogen peroxide. We're gonna mix a little bit in, brush it in with our soft bristle brush all around the denim. That's how not to ruin a shoe. All right, the shoes are fully dried up. Honestly, this look doesn't look bad at all. The white wash denim look looks dope. If I wanted to, I could end it right here, sew the tags in and lace it up, but we did not ruin a pair of shoes for nothing. We still gotta go in and use some red dye all over the denim. It's gonna get messy, so I'm gonna do my best to keep it as clean as possible. So with that being said, we're gonna remove the tongues and dye these separately. Once it's all done, we'll sew it back in. Got the tongues off, now it's time to make the sneakers colorful. For this, we'll be using RIT dye products. RIT went ahead and sent over a full care package full of their dyes. Let's go ahead and pop it open. Now this is a care package. We got a bunch of colors. They even sent over doubles for future projects. Shout out to RIT dye. They sent over the RIT dye more synthetic dye. This is the stuff you wanna use if you wanna dye your sneakers. Got our squeeze bottles with hot water ready to go. So we're gonna be mixing some colors. It'll probably be orange and yellow, orange and pink, and pink and purple. Let's start mixing.
check these out. We got all the dye applied, fully dried and rinsed out. I'm not gonna lie, I hated the process of this custom. It may have looked fun, but honestly, it was really messy to deal with. I had dye on my fingers, I was getting dye on the sole. The squeeze bottles that I bought from Walmart were so cheap. Anytime I would squeeze a little bit, so much dye would come out. I did my best to keep it as clean as possible, but that was hard to do. I got dye on the sole, on the leather, and the sock liners. But overall, we got what we wanted. We got some nice yellow tones over here. Orange, darker orange, pink, purple, blue, and teal. For the most part, we do have a nice gradient. In some areas, it has a tie-dye look, but it still looks great. The hang tag came out solid. We got the yellow and pink, a nice Arizona sunset vibe. The tongues also came out great. I'm not the biggest fan of the gradient, but it's okay, it's gonna be covered up by the laces anyway. For example, you gotta use the right colors, know how to blend the tones, and keep it as clean as possible. We're back onto the tongues. Before we could directly sew them onto the shoes, we're gonna take care of the tongue tags. Right here, we got the original ones we used. We're gonna put them in place right about here using some double-sided tape. Then using the post bed machine, we'll sew it in place. Right now we're gonna be using a heat removable pen to go over the original stitch lines. That way when I use the machine, I could just follow those lines. lock it in place. Tones are back in place like nothing ever happened. Now we're gonna do some prep work on the white leather. We're gonna remove the factory finish using S-Tone and cotton balls. Leather is all prepped. The color that we're gonna be laying down is the same exact blue that's on the sole. For that color we mixed up light gray, light blue, white, gamma blue. Real simple mix. For this, we'll be laying it down with an angular brush. Blue is good to go. I like that it matches the sole nicely and it pops off the rest of the colors. It did take forever, however, to get it underneath every single panel and not get any paint on the denim. For me, this part is very important. I hate cutting corners, but I can see how this part is easy to skip because nobody's gonna get up close and see it. But when I see other customizers work up close, that's the first thing I look at. The details matter. Now let's move on to the collar area. For this part, we're gonna be laying down the pink tone. I mixed up hot pink, magenta, and lilac. Mix it up real well. It was a really easy mix. We're gonna lay it down on these areas using an angler brush. Pink is laid down. It really pops off all the colors and the blue. On this shoe, I laid down a nice high gloss finish on the colors. It really pops. On this shoe, we still haven't touched it. We're gonna use some Angelus high gloss four coat. This stuff works great using an angler brush. Paint job is complete. Now we're back onto the denim. Like I mentioned earlier on, some of the grading wasn't very smooth. There's some harsh lines in between some colors. So for this, we're gonna distress the denim using a Dremel. I already kind of started on the shoe. Over here, there was a harsh line between the pink and the purple. I hit it with the Dremel, created some distress, and now you can't even see that. Good to go with the distressing. I like where it's at right now, but right here we got a clean panel to work with. Originally, we chopped off the Wings logo, but now we gotta replace it. Instead of doing the original Wings logo, we're gonna be doing the Nike text. But first, we gotta print it out.
Got the vinyl laid down nicely on the denim. Originally I was trying to go with the white, but it wasn't sticking very well to this material. So I switched over to the 3M and it worked nicely. And it has a nice pop. All that's left is to lace it up. We got these pink laces that I stole from a pair of bleach coral Jordan ones that came out this year. All right guys, that is gonna bring us to an end on these red dye Air Jordan ones. Based off the colors alone, these remind me of a few different things. The first one being our Arizona sunsets. We have some of the most beautiful skies and the colors on the shoes represent that nicely. Not too long ago, I did these Air Jordan 4K Cuddy Customs. These have a similar vibe. They also remind me of one of his album covers, Kids See Ghosts. The colors look the exact same. Now let's talk about the process, you guys. It sucked. We ruined the first pair of denim Jordan 1s by putting them in the bleach for way too long. After about 20 to 30 minutes, all the leather got completely washed away. So luckily, we bought another pair and took a different approach on it. We put the bleach directly onto the denim. After about 20 to 30 minutes outside in the sun, we washed away all the blue in the denim and got a clean canvas to work with. We applied a bunch of colors onto the denim using red dye. We got a nice gradient from yellow to purple. In some areas, it didn't fully take the gradient. It got more of a watercolor look. We also distressed the denim to kind of get rid of the harsher lines. Added the Nike on the side. Resold the Nike tongue tag. Added a bunch of colors, the blue and the pink. Overall, this custom turned out great, you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Vic Almighty. I'll catch you guys next Monday. See you guys. Peace.